Hello everyone, this is Todd Blankenship with Rocketstock.com and today I want to show you how to add natural organic camera movement to your motion graphics. We're going to use the built-in tracking tools within After Effects to create a look kind of like this. So in this example, I have this picture of an old house just kind of sitting on some wood like a table or something and I'm going to pretend that we're doing a documentary about something that happened in this house and we want to show the picture but make it a little bit more interesting than just doing, you know, your standard Ken Burns effect or zooming in on the picture uh, slowly over time. So this is kind of a cool way to almost make it seem like shot footage of that picture. Here's what I did. I grabbed a sheet of paper and I put little crosshairs on each corner and I grabbed my camera. And I just kind of shot it handheld a little bit, just kind of moving around it, just like that. So I did a whole bunch of different versions, just different you know, types of stuff, even some with zooms, things like that. And what we're going to do is we're just going to track this and apply that motion to our graphics. And you might be saying, hey, I don't want to take the time to crudely tape up a piece of paper. So just grab a B&H catalog that you have laying around and do it with your cell phone. It'll all work the same. You need to just find a moment in the footage that you shot that you like the motion. And I think this is kind of cool. I did like a little zoom there. I want to see how that works. Let's just click right here to set the endpoint of the footage. And then right there after the zoom, that's kind of cool. And then set the out point by clicking right here. And we're going to take that clip and we're going to drag it right down here to the new comp button right here. So now our footage is in the comp and let's go ahead and do a track. So I'm going to click on the clip here. And I'm going to open up the tracker. If you don't have it open, you can go up to Window and make sure that tracker is checked and it should be somewhere in your screen. So I got it right here. And we're going to select Track Motion. We want to make sure that we're tracking the position, the rotation, and the scale. So make sure that both of those are clicked. And OK, so down here we have Edit Target. We need to make sure that we have a target for it to, to send the data to. So let's go over here and right click, let's go to New and create a null object. And we're going to call this camera motion. So now over here in edit target, we'll click that and make sure that camera motion, our null object is selected. So now we need to move our tracking points where they need to go. The thing that's important to get accurate rotation tracking is to make sure you have the furthest corners possible that you can. So what I'm going to do is move one tracking point up here and one tracking point down here. So I'm going to take this tracking point and I'm going to move it up here. Just grab that corner right there. I'm going to move this one down here and this is kind of nice. There's this little bump. I think it's going to have an easier time finding that. And now let's go ahead and analyze forward. So we're going to click this button right here. There we go. So we're going to go ahead and apply that tracking data to our null object. Make sure X and Y selected. Hit OK. So now we have this, this null object and it's tracked in and you can see up in the corner there it's got the motion applied to it perfectly. So now that we have our tracking data we can go ahead and start building our graphic. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab uh, this wood layer that I have. It's just kind of a background and I'm going to scale it down by hitting S. And I want it to kind of be a little bit bigger than the edges of the frame. And then I have our picture of our old house. So I'm going to drag that in and do the same. Hit S, scale it down. Just to something that looks kind of, that looks right. So now I want to start making things look a little bit natural. So I'm going to take our house photo layer and I'm just going to rotate it like ever so slightly just so it doesn't look so perfectly. There we go. That looks kind of cool. And I also want to give the photo kind of a Polaroid look. I want it to look like a photo that's sitting on a table. So I'm going to select the photo layer, come up here to the rectangle tool and just double click it. And what that's done is it's created a, a perfect mask around the edges of the photo. Now I'm going to go to effect, generate, stroke. You want to make sure that the path is set to mask one. And we're just going to turn up the brush size here. And I'm going to turn up the hardness to 100%. So now we have a border on our photo. So click on the photo layer, go up to effect, perspective, and drop shadow. Let's turn down the opacity a bit. Let's turn up the distance. Something like that. 57. So we got 34 opacity, 57 distance, and then 
I'm going to soften it quite a bit. Let's change the distance to about 40. Yeah. That way it doesn't look like it's floating or anything like that. Now we're pretty much almost there. I'm going to take these two layers and then we're going to go ahead and parent them to our camera motion layer. So now here's what we've got. The movement's a little bit intense right now, but we'll take care of that later on. What I always like to do is add a little bit of, of, of a 3D element to it. I'm going to move our camera motion layer up to the top, and I'm going to go ahead and just make everything 3D. And we can actually go ahead and delete our footage layer. We don't need it anymore. Now I'm going to make another null, and I'm going to call it Scene Control. And it's right in the middle here and we're gonna make that 3D as well. Now, let's take our camera motion null and parent it to the scene control. And then, I'm gonna go ahead and open up rotation by hitting the R key. So we have our orientation option here. I'm gonna rotate it slightly on the Y axis, slightly to the left. I'm gonna set our stopwatch there. Go down to the end here, and just move it back in the other direction. I also want to make sure that motion blur is turned on for our two image layers there. Okay, so here's what we've got now. And yeah, the motion is definitely a little bit intense. So if you want to smooth out that motion a little bit, you can go to your camera motion layer and you'll hit the U key. And that brings up all of our tracking data. And I just, I'll just go ahead and honestly, I like the kind of the zoom part at the end. I just want to extend everything out a little bit. So I'm going to select the front half keyframes here, and I'm just going to hit delete. We don't need them. And I'm going to drag and select all the way to the end now. Come back to the very first keyframe here, hold down the Alt key, click, and then drag. And what that's going to do is just extend everything. So now our motion is kind of slowed down a little bit. Let's check that out. So from there, it's pretty much up to you as far as how you want to finish out the shot. What I'm going to do is add a little bit of vignette. So I'm going to go to New, Adjustment Layer. I'm going to go up to Effect, Color Correction, Exposure. I'm going to set the exposure to negative 1. And then I'm going to go up here to the Rectangle tool, change it to an Ellipse tool, double-click it. I'm going to set it to Inverted. Hit the F key for feather, and I'm going to feather it out to 320. And then I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to duplicate that, and I'm going to delete the exposure effect on that layer. I'm going to go to Effect, go to Blur, Gaussian Blur. Let's turn that to about 20. I'm going to add some color correction to the whole thing. So I think our photo is a little bit too saturated. So I'm going to click on the photo layer, color correction, tint, and I'm going to set that to about 50. I'm going to do another adjustment layer, go to color correction, curves, just up the contrast a bit. And then it's always a good idea when you're doing these sort of organic looking things to add some sort of grain. So you could go to new adjustment layer, go to effect, noise and grain, go to noise, and I like to set that to like five. Or you could use one of our film grains from our emulsion pack. I'm going to use the 35 millimeter coarse grain. I'm going to right click on it, go to transform. I'm going to say fit to comp width. And then we're going to set it to overlay. There you go. That looks pretty cool. And so here's what we ended up with. This is especially useful for things like this, like documentaries, things like that, where you need to add some interesting motion to a shot of a picture or anything like that. But you can really use it for any type of motion graphic. But yeah, I hope you get some use out of that technique. Thank you so much for watching and be sure to check out rocketstock.com. We have a lot of cool stuff available, including the emulsion pack that I mentioned earlier and a whole lot of other cool stuff. So be sure to check it out.